Hello there everybody and welcome back to Movie Scream. Today I'm going to be reviewing The First Omen from 2024 and this is directed by Arkasha Stevenson and stars Nell Tigerfree. Man, what a name that is. Up there with Amber Mid-Thunder, I think, for best actress name at the minute. This serves as a prequel to The Omen in which a young woman who has decided to give life service to the church in Rome opens up a grim discovery. Hi guys, i got to be honest, going by the teaser trailer that we got for this movie it kind of got me a little bit hyped i thought this was going to be a real nice surprise i just thought it was a little bit more of a smart horror trailer than what we're usually accustomed to you cannot judge a film by the trailer i know that but there was a lot of early buzz coming out about this film so that got me you know hyped up a little bit more and i've been watching all the omen movies leading up to this and in fact I've reviewed every single one of them on the channel, so I'll leave my Omen playlist down below if you want to go and check them reviews out. But you could say I was looking forward to this film whilst trying to manage my expectations. Now, just like the previous Omen movies, especially the first two and even the remake, really, I think the casting here is spot on. There's some real British talent here in Ralph Innocent and Bill Nighy, but the standout performer here, of course, is our main protagonist, who everyone's been raving about, Nell Tiger Free. Now, she is a character here who seems very meek, I think, but also has a little bit of a front on her as well. So she's kind of someone who will stand up for herself a little bit, I think. But with that vulnerability of the other side of her, I just felt a little bit bad for her because she was about to take this journey through hell, really. And you, she really does come across some terrifying situations in this film. And I think she pulled that off perfectly with her expressions and everything. She generally looked like she was scared in some of the moments in this movie. She was a good character to get behind, I thought, you know, I... I felt like I was going on a journey with her through this film. And as she was discovering and peeling back all the layers of this movie, you know, I just think she gave a good emotional performance, I thought. I mean, she's one to look out for, put it that way. And Arkasia Stevenson, who was actually had, having her directional debut here, thought that she shot the film very nicely. I mean, there was a lot of style here, you know, some visual quality in terms of where she points the camera and what she kind of does with the scenes or the images on screen. It all felt a little bit unique, I thought, compared to your generic horror movies that you get all the time or, you know, these just the straightforward horror movies that like to think they're stylistic this one was definitely on another level in terms of the directional choices that she made and i think like nell tiger free i know she's been around for a little bit of course but has a she has a bright future ahead of her and i'm really looking forward to seeing what she can do in future because there's definitely some star quality there I mean, there were some really chilling visuals at times here. I was looking at some images on screen. I was like, oh, there's no way I'd want to walk towards that in a dark alley. But, you know, I think she got some of the visual quality involving the haunting moments down to a T here. There are also some death scenes that she handled really well, especially one moment that was reminiscent to a certain moment in the original Omen movie. Even though I kind of knew what was coming there because I just watched the original and it was starting to build up to be the exact same thing. I think she did enhance it a little bit more to still give you that moment where you're like, what the fuck, you know, a real mind blowing moment there. And it does keep in tone with the original Omen movie as well, with the theme around itself and the way it looks. And there's also some moments later on, some twists and turns enter the story. And I was like, holy shit, didn't see that coming. Now, some of the twists and turns didn't work for me. There is sometimes one too many, but it's not exactly your straightforward film. It does try and throw you off a little bit. And at times it did succeed. However, guys, unfortunately, there about all the positives i could muster up about the first omen i am not on the same wavelength as the other people who seem to think this is the horror movie of the year and an absolute masterpiece and some even saying it's better than the first movie that is just not me whatsoever i just found this movie very very boring <laughs> unfortunately i just thought this was an absolute slog to get through at times and it just kept throwing little learning curves at us. Like, even, look, look it, it, we, we are learning stuff as we go. It's a very, very slow bear movie, and I'm not against slow bear movies at all. I kind of like it when movies do that. 
But there's got to be a little bit of a payoff. And even when the twists and turns sort of happen in this movie, what I was talking about just before, we are still learning things after that and sort of still building it up until it came to its end. And I was like, so that movie really didn't do what, what it was sort of promising to do. I just felt like we were getting somewhere and then we actually didn't. And this is a little bit of a personal thing for me, guys, but a lot of this movie does take place in these religious surroundings, like whether it be cathedrals, convents, churches, whatever you want to call it. And that is just not really my type of thing. You know, religious horror is not really my go-to subgenre. I do watch them and stuff, but that is one thing that kind of puts me off. And even though it was thematically like the first Omer movie in the exterior scenes, when we're all inside these locations, I was just like, oh, man, I, I just really don't like that setting. But that is a personal thing for me, really. I mean, I just don't think there's a more of a boring place for a movie to take place in. But that, again, that is just me. Now, even though the visual quality isn't that generic here or anything, she definitely does something different with the camera and stuff. I do think that the jump scares were poor in this movie and they did feel generic, like ones that you see all the time. There was this one moment where I thought, okay, this one is really going to throw me off, where the character is sort of lighting up a little bit there in the room. And I thought, okay, how is this going to turn out? And I liked all the build up to it, but no, it, it was just one of them that, yeah, I, I knew exactly what was going to happen, unfortunately. The movie is also let down sometimes with the lighting. Now, there is some really dark moments in this film that just didn't need to be that dark. I mean, you're kind of looking at the screen and going, what is that? What am I trying to make out? People will may disagree with that, and it says it adds to the atmosphere, but I kind of like to see what is going on. So unfortunately, it was let down in the visual department with the lighting, I thought, at times. Okay, guys, this might be a little bit of a mini spoiler here, but if you didn't know, this is a prequel to the Oma movie. I'm going to talk about the ending here just a little bit. I don't think I'm giving too much away, but if you do not want to know anything about the ending or anything like that, maybe come back after you've watched the movie. But I just want to get my little bits of thoughts across regarding the original Oma movie and a couple that came after it. Now... <sighs> Like I said, this is a prequel, and even though there's a few twists and turns thrown in the story, I kind of knew exactly where this third act was going to go. So if you go back and watch the original Omen film, the final 45 minutes is kind of a fact-finding adventure with Gregory Peck and David Warner, and they're discovering everything that has been happening with you know, Robert Thorne's child that you know, Lee Remick's character gave birth to, and also the origins of Damien and stuff, and that, the jackal, and everything like that. And that is basically the last 30 minutes of this. In fact, it's kind of the whole movie, but the last kind of 30 minutes, it just plays out that in front of your eyes, basically. And I knew exactly where this movie was going towards when we got to the climax. And for me, once you've seen Damien Omen 3, The Final Conflict, and how that movie ends, it kind of takes away any, you know, any impact or any scare factor or any hard-hitting ending because you know how this journey for Damien goes. And I was just like, yeah, I don't, I'm what? You know, I, I've seen the, the end of The Omen 3. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I think if you've got to do a prequel, you've got to do something to shake the story up a little bit there. And it's basically just telling us everything we already know when it's all said and done. i got to say, guys, this movie really reminded me of one that came out just a month ago there called Immaculate with Sydney Sweeney in. And i got to say, I definitely preferred Immaculate. Now, I do think it's a fair comparison to compare these films. There's a lot of story beats that are the same. It takes place in the same sort of setting and stuff. And I think out of them two films, I definitely preferred Immaculate. Mainly because it kind of done something a little bit different with the third act and stuff like that. So, 
unfortunately, look, I did not hate this movie or anything. I just found it a little bit boring and a little bit dull at times. There were things to like, especially with the visuals and stuff. But when it was all said and done, I was left kind of disappointed. I'm just going to go ahead and make this movie now, guys. I'm going to give The First Omen a 5 out of 10. I would like to give this movie another go. Maybe I was missing something because... I just feel like I am in the minority here, but definitely on this first viewing, I just did not see what everyone else saw in this film. And after really enjoying the Omen franchise leading up to this, it's one of my least favourite movies in that franchise for sure. Okay guys, at the end of these reviews, I always like to leave a little fun fact. Now a fun fact for the first Omen is that this is actually the acting debut of Nicole Soros, who plays Carlita in the film and I thought she was a pretty good actress in this movie so she's another one to look out for. Okay guys I hope you all enjoyed this review sorry I could not be a little bit more upbeat about this film but don't forget to check out my other Omen reviews in the link down below what did you think of the first Omen I know that I am in the minority of not really enjoying this film but hey ho that is just me I will watch it again though at some point don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel if horror is your sort of thing thanks so much guys you take care and i'll see you on the next video